Okay. So my name is Ross, Ross Clark, um, the Mindful Coach, and I'm really, really glad to be here. Uh, and part of that is, is it, um, it's an opportunity for me to kind of uh, give back for some of the teachers and, and trainers and support that I've had over the years. And I really appreciate folks that have have the courage to actually, you know, ask those questions. What can I do about my anxiety? Because that really hit me in, in 1995. <clears throat> so we're going to have four sessions. This is going to be the first session. And it's going to be on mindfulness and grounding. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to touch on thoughts, emotions, and mindfulness. And then we're going to have a little bit of a social chat time at... Uh, after about three quarters of an hour of the presentation. And the learning objectives are, like really to keep things simple, there's something called the rule of three. And they found that it's hard for the brain to keep track of more than three things. So everything that you'll receive will, will have no more than three parts to it, we'll say. So today, we're going to be working with mindfulness, and I'll be showing you more on that. Attention, intention, and reflection. And the experience that I'm offering is learning how to become grounded. Guidelines. This is educational, and everything is optional. So if something doesn't feel right, then just put it aside. And this doesn't take the place in any way of professional care. So this is meant to supplement and to help. Uh, to maybe have clear decisions around what health care um, that you think is best. That's where it's really helped me in my journey. So, as I mentioned earlier, um, this is, uh, I have a company called Mindfulness for Life because what I found is that Mindfulness works in every aspect of my life. We're now using it for all forms of, of, of um, care, for trauma, for firefighters, um, children, uh, they, they really respond well to it. A new finding was that mindfulness meditation provides as much relief from anxiety and depression uh, symptoms as antidepressants. So it's not that it's to take the place of antidepressants, but maybe if we're already taking the antidepressants and we bring some mindfulness, then what we can do is we can be at a higher level. Uh, and these were credentials that I went through. Uh, these are clients um, that I've worked with. And here's uh, a bit of my history. In 1990, uh, things started to get um, challenging for me. Uh, my wife got cancer for the third time. I had some, some health back issues. And then our, our parents, all our parents, um, got a variety of diseases. In uh, 1995, I was at a place, the acronym AAD stands for Anxiety, Anger, and Despair. Those were the three characteristics of my life. And they built up from 1990 to 1995 to the point where I could no longer work. I had six different medical problems. My hair was falling out. Um, the doctor said, you don't have a choice. You're going to have to resign. I really enjoyed my work. So that's what I had to do as I had to resign. So it was in 1995 I lost my career. And in 2006 again, there was, there was always the anger, the anxiety, and the despair. Um, and I had taken a position at the University of Guelph. But my health, um, they didn't know what was going on with my health, but I wasn't able to work any longer. So in 2006, I was no longer able to work um, because of my health, because I'd lost my health. So that was the second loss for me. Uh, in 2011, again, I still have the, the anxiety. It's still there. And the despair, you know, feeling useless because I can't be in the workplace doing what I enjoyed doing. And um, what happened over the, the process of those years is I lost uh, our life savings. So I lost my career, my health, and our life savings. Uh, 2016, that's where I am now. 
improved health <laughs> and relationships uh, because when you're <laughs> when you're angry and, and have a lot of anxiety and despair you're not the most you know joyful person to be around um, but I've learned a lot through this process so this is what we're here for uh, these there's going to be a few important slides that I'm going to point out to you and this is one of them so what happens <coughs> is there will be a certain event will we'll start and it could be a number of things what it'll do it'll start and it'll create a thought a lot of our thoughts have an emotional content so if there's an anxiety there a little subtle fear 10 minutes later if we're still kind of ruminating back and forth about oh I don't know what I'm going to do about that I'm not sure I'll gone it oh it probably won't work then what's happened is the anxiety emotion has gotten bigger and stronger and it will do that because that's the way the mind works not that there's anything wrong with me that's just the way that the mind works after an hour of that <laughs> then I'm really really getting into a place of um, discomfort so when there's anxiety happening the body naturally is getting ready for for fight or flight so what it does is it prepares us for that by putting cortisol into our bloodstream cortisol and adrenaline so we're meant to have a little bit of cortisol and adrenaline but it's only meant to be there for a short period of time and if after an hour the intensity gets higher and higher to the point where now it's having a significant effect on us a very significant effect on us so this is a solution thought emotion we send some of our attention to the posture of our body so this is a process of called called grounding and if there's one takeaway from after all all four of these workshops if you have a sense of grounding and you have your own favorite way of grounding this would be a wonderful wonderful um, thing uh, I would really feel great if, if, you, if you had that so I call this stopping and dropping so I find that the mind likes to have things that are kind of catchy and you know oh it should stop and drop and now that means something for me and it seems that it's kind of catchy um, and it can mean different things for different people but one of the things it can mean is just stopping the overthinking just suspending it because it's pretty much impossible I think to stop it but just suspend the overthinking the worry about uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow and drop into some safe sensations in my body now that may only happen for a few seconds but it accumulates and it gives us a place to put some of our attention so we still may feel some of the anxiety but now we have a place that we can put some of our attention at the same time that the anxiety is there so I don't want to oversell this um, this will not take care of our anxiety because our anxiety is supposed to be here just that we got too much of it sometimes uh, but this is the process that what we can do is we can learn how to take care of ourselves and over time what happens sometimes is we start to understand we understand deeper what's underneath this anxiety and anyway that'll be towards the end of the course we'll be looking at that so what I'm going to do is if I stand up here all day or all morning and uh, just talk uh, probably about the takeaway that you'll have will be about 8% that you'll retain from this but if we do some exercises some practices together you'll be getting over 80% retention so your time's valuable and I'd like to invite us to take and do a few of these practices so you can get the experience of what it is to be grounded so I call this grounding time like how much grounding time did I give myself yesterday well I had to give myself a whole bunch <laughs> last I've been um, I still am not out of the woods with the diseases so my energy level is quite low 
And so I've been, you know, wanting to put together this material and, and get ready for the workshop. And last night, about nine o'clock, I just had to stop. I hadn't gone through my slides, so you'll have to excuse me if there's a few bumps in the road here. But I just stopped and I just grounded. And I ended up, that was what I did for the rest of the evening. Because I knew if I kept pushing and pushing myself like I used to, I probably, you know, I, <laughs> I wouldn't be a very happy camper uh, this morning, so I just have to trust that, you know, I'll be able to, to work with this. So, intention to stop and drop, attention to the sounds and the movement sensations of the posture. So this is going to be a grounding, sense, grounding exercise. And if you feel comfortable, everything is optional. Nothing here is, is uh, at all necessary. But if you feel comfortable, I'd just like to take us through a, a few minutes of stopping and dropping. And you're welcome to close your eyes if you feel comfortable with that. When we close our eyes, it, it takes care of a lot of the visual distraction that we can have. So if that feels comfortable, then just to gently close your eyes. And I'm going to ring the bell just to help to bring us to the sound of the bell. And then at the end of the practice, I'll ring the bell again just to kind of release us from the practice just so that we can be back uh, present again. So this exercise of stopping and dropping, the mind wants to have something that I can pay attention to. So what we're going to do is we're going to give it sound. So we become interested in the sounds in the room. And in mindfulness we talk about just bare non-judgmental attention. So we'll hear sounds in the room as best we can. We won't think about them. We won't judge them as too much or too less, as best we can. And we just let those sounds come, come to us. And whenever we find the mind going off, we just gently bring it back, very, very gently, just becoming interested again in the sounds that are in the room. The reason that we do this is because sounds are always in the present moment. So if we shift some of our attention onto sounds in the present moment, we have less attention on our anxiety. And the mind, it gets bored pretty quick. So what we're going to do now is we're going to shift our attention to the posture of the body. So just noticing where your feet are. Noticing where your hands are. And noticing where your tongue is. Where is the tongue in the mouth? Can you feel where the tongue is in the mouth? And again, we don't change anything. We just become aware of the sensations because here's the second, second place that we can use is we can use the sensations. These are all safe sensations. These are grounding sensations and they're in the present moment. Feeling the feet.
maybe bringing the hands together in front of you and just holding one hand with the other. Maybe feeling the, the hard knuckles of the other hand. Anything that's hard is safe. These are all safe places to put your attention. And for the tongue, you can just gently push your tongue against your teeth because the teeth are hard. And then if the mind is getting a bit bored or anxious, we can just go back to the feet, feeling maybe just slightly feeling the, uh, the bottoms of the feet. Then shifting the attention to the hands. And then shifting the attention to the tongue. So we're going to end this practice in the next minute, but before I do, one of the things we do in mindfulness is we inquire, we reflect on the experience. So our reflection was, what did I notice? And if you notice something, that's fine, and if you didn't notice something, that's fine. Second inquiry would be, what was different? What was different about sitting here and like this and what it was, say, 10 minutes ago? And then the final inquiry, the final reflection, is there anything here that might be helpful? And if there is, that's fine. And if there isn't, that's fine too. We can't get this wrong. So I'll ring the bell just to end this practice. And just to transition from that experience that we just had to coming back into the room. Hmm. So thank you for your interest. So this is the mindfulness triangle. Attention, which was, these are natural faculties that we all have. So it's not anything that we have to go out and get. We all have the ability to pay attention. So what we do is we just cultivate that. We learn a new way of paying attention. Might be one way it's said sometimes. So we have attention. What we're going to do is we're just going to develop that way that we pay attention. So attention is one of our natural, natural faculties. Intention is a second. That's choice. So what we did in that exercise, we paid attention to the sounds. That was an intention. And then we paid attention to the posture of the body. And yawns are great. Yeah, that shows that that's the body releasing anxiety. Yawns and sighs, just welcome them. It, it, it's best news for me when people yawn or sigh. Uh, so intention, that's, we notice something, and this could be anxiety that we notice, but then we have intention. So what we can do is now we say, ah, there's anxiety here. Ah, oh yeah, that grounding thing. Maybe that might help. So that's the uh, place that we can start to, to train in, is developing and caring intention. May I be grounded and safe. May I be grounded and safe. Just that. And then the reflection. This, is, this might be something we do maybe 5%. This is probably 60%. This is probably, I don't know, 35%. And this would be about 5%. But if we have an ongoing issue that every time I see Bill, I get upset, uh, what I can do is at some point, maybe on a Sunday morning when I'm quite grounded, I can go and I can visit that. So this is for future anxiety, things that we know are gonna to happen tomorrow. 
This one here that we just did, that's for immediate. Right now, I drove here, I got here, got everything set up. <sighs> now I just want to stop and drop. So that's right now. But we use the reflection both to cultivate our experience that we just had, but then the long term for future anxiety <coughs> to reduce it. So <coughs> mindfulness, attention and intention. Attention, the middle faculty to know I'm feeling cold. So once I have that awareness that I'm feeling cold, then I can say, oh, what would my intention be? I can choose to put on a sweater. And the neat thing is they say that with more mindfulness, we have more choices. Mm -hmm. And they tell us that when we feel that we don't have a choice, that's when there's chemical imprinting that can happen in the brain. So just to know more mindfulness, more choices. And I'm gonna show you this video. Uh, and it's about attention and intention. So there's gonna be a, a little boy walking his dog and he's going to notice something and then he's going to kind of pause and then you'll see his intention come. <laughs> 